Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to talk about TCP IP, UDP, ports, and sockets. An overview of what they are and what they do. So what is TCP IP and UDP? Well, IP, TCP, and UDP are all network communication protocols. A protocol is nothing more than a system of procedures or regulations to perform a task. In this case, it is all the applications that tell the computer system how to perform a specific function or task. In this particular case, it deals with the means of communications on a network. IP, better known as the Internet Protocol, is the network protocol that uses logical addressing to uniquely identify host and direct data from one host to another. IP is commonly paired with TCP to make up what is known as the TCP IP suite or the Internet Protocol suite. TCP which is Transmission Control Protocol. This protocol tells the system how to establish and maintain a connection between systems and their applications for data transfer. TCP uses sockets and ports ranging from 0 to 65,534. It has well-known ports 1 through 1,023 and ephemeral ports 1,024 to 65,534. UDP, User Datagram Protocol, this protocol tells the system how to communicate between two computers using short messages. UDP uses sockets and ports ranging from 0 to 65,534. So what is TCP exactly? Transmission Control Protocol. It functions entirely as a communication medium for applications in the system. When combined with the IP address and the TCP IP suite, TCP becomes the master of the connection and error correction. TCP is a connection-oriented protocol that establishes a connection on a port and is correlating operating system socket through a three-way handshake. The way it works is you have the server listening on a port waiting for a client to request a connection. Let's say you're requesting a web browser or you're using a web browser and you want to view google.com. You send a request out to the internet and connect. Your system sends a SYN, which is a synchronized packet, to the host which is hosting google.com. SYN is the packet saying, Hey you there, I want to connect. Then google.com replies back with a SYNAC acknowledgement, telling the system, I am here and I want to connect to you. Your system then will reply with an ACK packet telling the server, Yes, let's connect, and your connection is then fully established. To close a the connection, there is a four-way communication. Let's say you decided you're done and you close the connection to google.com. Your computer sends a fin, which is a finished packet, which tells the receiving host, OK, I'm done. In which the host for google.com replies to your system with an act saying, goodbye. Then immediately sends your computer a fin saying, I'm done. Your computer then responds with an act saying, OK, goodbye. This four-way handshake closes the connection communication, which is known as a graceful disconnect. So is there another disconnect? Sure, there are two others, half-close and forced abort. A half-close happens all the time. Let's say you're downloading a file. When file download completes, the host will send a fin packet, indicating that part that part is complete and the connection will have, be half-closed. When your system sends back an act, but no fin, and then as soon as you request another file, the send goes back out, the act response, the act response is sent, and the system reconnects. A forced abort happens when there is an error. A quick change in data requests aborting the current request or when a connection attempt is made and the system isn't expecting the connection request. In this case, TCP instead sends a fin, then ACK. It will actually send just an RST, which is a reset packet to the port, telling it to immediately drop its connection and reset. TCP flags. A TCP flag is the flag set to indicate what type of message TCP is sending. Send synchronize establishes connection by synchronizing sequence numbers act acknowledgement confirms packet received fin or finish finishes the transmission or session psh or push pushes data rst or reset drops connection and reset support urg or urgent establishes priority of a given packet and the remaining three ece ns and cwr deal with tcp handling network congestion TCP traffic flow and error correction. TCP being connection oriented offers a valuable service in both network traffic control and error correction capability. How it does this is extremely complex and nothing short of amazing. T 
TCP uses a stream of processing as, uses a stream processing approach so it can process a stream as single bits that come in rather than performing a preformatted block. It breaks data down into variable lengths and segments. It communicates to itself not to send packets over spe specific size to avoid congestion and can vary the size of larger or smaller as needed. It uses sequencing numbers and reassembles the packets into segments then full data by knowing what sequence the pieces are in. For error correction, TCP uses two methods. For one, it employs a checksum that it can use to check the integrity of the segment and can re-request a segment if it is bad, or for the other, it employs an ACK response so that if the ACK is never received after sending a packet, it will resend the packet until it gets an ACK from the receiving system to verify it received that packet. What is UDP exactly? User Datagram Protocol is the master of just quickly sending information from one host to another. When combined with IP, UDP is a very fast protocol that is quick to just blast out a message. UDP is a connectionless protocol, so it doesn't send any kind of connection request or disconnect request or acknowledgement from one host to the other. So let's look at it this way. Everyone has that friend at random that just starts talking and doesn't really bother to check and verify if you're listening at all. Midway through, they're like, you know what I mean? And you having not heard a single part of the conversation, they're like, what? Well, that's how UDP works. It just sends the message regardless if you're listening or not. And the what response can be seen when a host replies back with an ICMP message saying destination port unreachable. UDP traffic flow and error correction. There really isn't much for UDP traffic flow. IP might fragment the packets down if they're too large, but other than that, it just kind of sends whatever it wants to send. There's no error correction with UDP either. The host just sends the data with no real care if the data makes it to the other end or not. This can be very problematic in lots of ways, but the protocol isn't designed for traffic control or error correction. UDP is the master of blasting quick and short messages from one host to another. If the receiving host isn't listening, eh, too bad. All error control and flow control has to be built into the application that's using UDP. The difference between TCP and UDP? TCP is connection oriented, has flow and error control, and is slower and much more complex. UDP is connectionless, fast, and simple. So what is TCP or UDP used for? TCP, any instance in which reliability is required. Browsing the web, online banking, file transfer, transfer of critical or important data. UDP, any instance in which speed is key and reliability is not so important. Video and streaming. Audio streaming. Online video games. Quick messages such as ICMP packets. Or a lot of your IM messages are also UDP. So what is IP? Internet Protocol is the main protocol that supplies unique addressing to host systems on the network. IP also specifies how your network is defined and how many hosts exist on the network. IP gives you a way to segment your networks into subnetworks and segments known as subnets. IP is like the post office. It gives the master means to supply the addressing system on which uniquely identifies the host so that the network can properly send a message. For more information, see my other video which goes over IP addressing, what it is, and how to use it. So what is a port? A port is one half of a protocol for UDP or TCP that is used by an application that represents a single service offered by a server in which the server actively listens on for incoming connections for TCP or incoming connections for UDP. There are a total of 65,535 ports which correspond to their respective sockets for both TCP and UDP. Well-known ports range from 1 to 1,023. Ephemeral ports range from 1,024 to 65,535. Port 0 is a reserve port that cannot there is a reserve port that is not supposed to be used. Some operating systems use port 0 as a means to dynamically allocate ephemeral ports by setting the initial port to 0, making the operating system look for an open available port to assign. Each of the ports are not used for the same thing between TCP or UDP. Security for this half can be done with a firewall to close and block the ports. So what is a socket? A socket is one half of a protocol for UDP and TCP. It is the operating system's abstraction of the TCP connection or UDP message. The socket and port work together directly hand-in-hand -hand as two halves of a protocol 
in order to ensure that communications can exist commonly and has address associated to it so that the OS can better understand this communication and interface with the application port. Protection on the socket side exists with SSL encryption and authentication for the connection. Most common well-known ports, FTP, port 20 or 21, commonly 21, SSH, 22, you also have SFTP, which is the secure FTP, which also uses SSH port 22, Telnet, port 23, SMTP, which is simple mail transfer protocol, uses port 25, Domain Name Service, DNS, port 53, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, port 80, that is the International Hackers port, most commonly open on all systems. You have the Post Office Protocol 3, POP3, uses port 110. The Network Time Protocol, NTP, uses 123. IMAP, that is commonly used for your online email clients like Gmail, Yahoo, uses port 143. You have HTTPS, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, uses SSL and TLS, uses port 443. UDP, you have DNS 53. Boot P and DHCP, port 67. TFTP, Trivial FTP, port 69. And SNMP 161. You can see on the image here on the left hand side, this is a network setup. You can see right here what the ending IP address is. A lot of these will use UDP and TCP protocols over IP. This is an IP network. All the traffic is going to be controlled by TCP, IP, and UDP. I'd like to thank you for your time on this presentation. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. And as always, watch, like, and share. Have a great day.